happening everywhere, in manufacturing, service industries, government agencies, hospitals, universities, in a growing number of organizations throughout America today, it is no longer business as usual. Foreign competition and changing economic conditions have forced us to ask difficult questions about the quality of our goods and services, the productivity of our people. One man providing answers to these questions is Dr. W. Edwards Deming, a statistician and business consultant whose philosophy was used by the Japanese in transforming their country into one of the world's great economic powers. I told the Japanese that they would capture markets within five years, the world over, that they would take their place alongside prosperous nations. They have done it. They have done it. No one, I was the only man in, in uh, Japan in 1950 that believed it, but I believed it and I knew it. It has come about. They're living better than we do. Something has happened. Differences management, nothing but. The Pontiac Motor Division of GM is one of the many American companies which, in recent years, has been turning to Dr. Deming and his 14 obligations of management in their search for improvement. Since 1981, when Pontiac first hired Deming as a management consultant, a unique story has been unfolding. This film is about that story. In it, there are lessons for all companies. Dr. Deming's work always begins at the top. His first concentration really was with me uh, and our staff to, uh, to see whether we really believed what he was telling us, whether we really believed his 14 points. And, uh, and he really didn't go much beyond that until he got the consensus of the staff organization. Over the next two years, Deming met frequently with management staff. He questioned them constantly, forcing them to reevaluate long-standing decisions and policies. At a recent meeting, he challenged their use of statistics in a customer survey. Well, the Pontiac customers who don't respond are probably no different than the Buick Olds and do you Chevrolet. Know that? Do you know that? No, we don't. On what basis do you we know that? We don't know that. That's why we've got Ron That's we taking a look at it. We, there's well, a lot do, of things. Why do you take the 50% and do anything? Why don't you put it in the wastebasket where it belongs? Deming's style of working with, uh, with management groups could be termed confrontational in the sense that he questions absolutely everything you tell him. You have to understand that he's questioning you because he really wants to get you to think. What about the remainder? What do you know about them? Deming has statistically demonstrated that 85% of all quality and productivity problems are systems problems, the fault of management, not of the hourly worker. That is why his most urgent message is to top management to create a system in which each worker can do a good job. The big question is, will he be able to take pride in his work? I think so. Well, you'll have to keep in touch with him just as you try to keep in touch with customers. Does he, can he take pride in his work? There's your strength. As Give him a chance. As you know, we had a 40-hour... I learned from the hourly people why they cannot work with pride. And the barriers to pride of workmanship uh, there by action to management, or the removal will take action by management. Take a long time. Management been unaware that there were barriers. Blamed everything on the hourly workers. Totally wrong. He is tough on us, and he should be. Because uh, with uh, good management, in terms of providing s good systems for people to work in, People will do their part. Management just has to do theirs. As top management became committed to the Deming philosophy, change began to spread throughout the huge Pontiac organization. Deming gave seminars and talked to hundreds of people at all different levels. His 14 points provided a guide, a roadmap for change. To many people all over Pontiac, this roadmap made sense. In manufacturing areas throughout Pontiac, the Deming message has been heard the need for improved management, for statistically controlled processes, for improved communication, and for a constant emphasis on quality. But change is not limited to manufacturing. In administrative areas all over Pontiac, such as here in the financial department, the 14 points are being applied in a way that would work in any organization. The 
four areas that we're looking at to improve our processes can apply to any service organization, any administrative area. Examining your paperwork for worth and redundancy. Looking at automating your manual and repetitive jobs. Reducing errors, actually fixing your system as opposed to patching it. And balancing employee workload. You can't separate the quality of your employee's work life from the quality of your products. Uh, you need both to have a quality organization. But I'll bring that to our staff, too, and ask them to make timely announcements in the department. An important damning message is the need for communication between managers and employees. One way that Pontiac is working towards this goal is the People Council, a group of managers and elected representatives who meet monthly to talk about previously undiscussed employee concerns and management policies. If you have a promotion, how do we deal with the dynamic of management being perceived as sheltering or hiding something because they have a concern about it? And we need some guidance on that. We make them all public. It's, I think it's the best way to do it. Just be up front <coughs> with all promotions, transfers, whatever. I think that's between you and your supervisor. I don't think that's up between me and seven other people in the cost department. If, uh, if I'm fifth, sixth, or seventh, I don't, I don't think it's their business. It's my business. I'm here fighting for a living. As, as a manager, I feel you, you need to make those things known so that everybody knows what's going on. I guess I'd like to just kind of ask the table, uh, what's our consensus opinion? One of the most critical elements of the 14 points are that it's management's job to reduce fear and create an environment of open two-way communications. Now, only with that environment where the, where the employees can talk to their bosses and vice versa in a constructive environment uh, can you really get uh, the kinds of productivity improvements that we're looking for. The way we run the business is task-oriented. That means you're contributing if you're getting tasks done. Even though you have trouble getting them done, and even though they may not have turned out exactly the way you want them and or on time, what we don't do is build into the structure that says, let's go back and find out from a system standpoint why couldn't people get their jobs done right the first time and on time? And it's really a fear that exists to talk about problems that are difficult to, to solve. Isn't it safer to do nothing? To do something, you might have to explain what, why you wish to do it. And if it didn't work out right, it would hurt your annual rating. Safer to do nothing in management. Safer to do nothing. The management of Pontiac is stepping out and taking a chance, taking some risks, knowing that nothing will be accomplished unless we make some changes. While the different departments at Pontiac were selectively applying the 14 points, an opportunity arose to see how the whole philosophy would work from start to finish. Show me the two systems we came up with on this 85 end. This is the U.S. system right here. Solid with the design and production of a brand new car, the Fiero, a kind of Deming experiment began. The first principles to come into play were improved and earlier communication between departments. One of the 14 points, break down barriers. Well, so in a design process, such as we're involved in product engineering, you want to get all the various disciplines involved in the product as early in the design of it as possible, so that those that will be impacted by it can provide their inputs in the beginning, because none of us by ourselves have got the expertise to be able to deal with each issue. One of the things that we want to do on this particular car line is we want to single source all the steel items. That's the desirable thing. We have to identify the materials that, we have to, that we're going to use on the car. Then we have to select the source and get them involved with product engineering, which is Dick's group and Joe's group, immediately. A cornerstone of the Deming philosophy is a changed relationship with suppliers. This means choosing a single supplier for any given part and involving suppliers much earlier in the design process. With the Fiero, those people who could make suggestions and spot problems were given the chance to do so before decisions were made. And I think the thing that's so exciting about the new Fiero program is that it started out as a team effort so that engineers and manufacturing people and suppliers were, were there right on the go. It wasn't a case of the engineering community designing a car, turning it over to somebody else and say, okay, here's the car, you build it. And and we had a chance uh, because we took an old plant with all of our old habits 
and close that plant down and had about eight months to work with all those people and all those management processes and apply the Deming philosophy. Although in many ways the Fiero plant looks like any other automobile factory, even at first glance there are some differences. Like the fact that none of the managers wear ties, or that everyone, both salaried and hourly employees, eat in the same cafeteria and park in the same parking lot, or that there is a much reduced repair area and scrap lot, or that people seem to be a little more involved in their work than they used to be. These are all outward signs of change, things that are easy to see. But if things really changed, at first, a lot of people didn't believe it. To dispel some of the skepticism and to explain the new philosophy, a 40-hour orientation session was held for all new employees at a local college. We're talking about how are we going to make decisions. You know, in the past, it was fairly easy, right? One guy, the foreman, the plant manager, whoever it was, made the decision, right? Don Owens, you do the exhaust load job. End of conversation, right? You remember that one, right? <laughs> now! Say, hey, Orientation covered many three. areas. Guess the new what? assembly method, the new relationship one. with suppliers, one. the use of statistics in production, and perhaps most important, new decision-making skills. Ideally, what we want to do is somehow, through some kind of a process, make those decisions so that we can all accept them, so that we can all buy into them, so that we can all support them. Now, how in the world do you do that? That's the question. To learn this consensus method of decision making, orientation teams participate in a survival training exercise. They're asked to imagine that they are in the wilderness and a problem arises. Then they must consider the alternative solutions. You can A, head back at once, keeping the light on, hoping the light will glow enough for you to make out landmarks. Okay, you doze off with, with your small stove going. There is danger if the flame is A, yellow, B, blue, the next step was to discuss the alternatives and to build a consensus about the best solution. Although the exercise was instructive, it wasn't until these employees started work that the real value of this new decision-making process would be seen. The fact that management took time out to give us the opportunity to express ourselves and to get together and work as a group that we should be, should have been all along. I really appreciate that. Because before it was get it or get out. But now, let's work it out. If there was a problem in the plant, they couldn't perform their job in, in a way that would give them the highest quality. Say it was a, a tooling problem. Well, rather than run into the, the management or the foreman and say, hey, I've got a tooling problem, solve my problem. We're saying, team, don't just identify that problem, but tell us what you want us to do to help you correct that. Even, even though you guys are helping me up building my stock, there's still too much work on that job. And for eight hours, I'll never make it. I know that. Three I hours, I'll never make it. Right now, we have three operations in the same position you're in. Okay. They Once a week at Fiero, the, the line stops, and all 120 teams hold meetings to work on problems. But the long history of mistrust between labor and management is not erased overnight, and each side is still testing the other to find out the depth of their commitment. Because, you know, us people have been brain tried to been brainwashed for years, and it hasn't worked. And we're not going to put up with it now because they're saying this concept's going to work and we want to see some action. Well, there's no one trying to brainwash anybody. The only not thing now, no, not now. I said in the past. They're not going to divorce us and run off and leave us. If we need the help, we're going to get the help. What we were told was that we were going to be able to really jump in there and, and, and get a new, whole new concept. But it isn't working that way. We're having to fight it step for step. You have to learn to crawl before you can start walking, and that's what we're doing here. We're trying to do things a different way. And as, as a result of that, in many cases, you run up against some opposition. I don't think it's insurmountable, but I do think that uh, it makes our job a little bit more difficult because there are many people who are still operating as they did 10 years ago. In the past, I've felt secure sitting in my office here with the door shut and the air conditioning on. I don't feel that secure anymore. I have two work groups out here with 17 in each group, and each 
work group themselves could function without a supervisor. So I used to be able to crack a whip and see things happen out here online. Right now, I have to think about what I want to say. I can't tell somebody, do it, and this is the way it is. I have to give all the background and explain it in, in depth. The role of a manager ought to be to help his people to do a better job. You should be working with them all the time and not just judge. You should be a coach working with them all the time. It seems so basic. A supervisor should be able to communicate with his or her employees about changes or problems, about what's expected of them. It seems so basic, and yet it's very different from the way most workplaces are managed. People don't know what the job is. Not sure what it is. The job is not clear. The product is not clear. The specifications are not clear. Moreover, what was wrong yesterday is right today because the foreman needs it for this quota. He's judged on numbers, not on quality. This traditional way of doing business has had a profound effect on the American worker. You totally and completely lose your identity as an individual and, and your respect for yourself whenever you do automatically as you're told for an extended period of time, day after day after day. You don't think. You're not required to think. And I feel that uh, human dignity is very important. And uh, respect, you know, people like to be respected. The fact that management is listening now to the people that actually do the jobs, as well as the engineers. The man on the line is the one that has to deal with and work the job. So therefore, they would know more about it and how to better make suggestions to make it run that much better. And because that's what they're doing now, it's a better product. It might seem that this degree of cooperation between management and labor would be threatening to the union at Fiero. But as management continues to demonstrate its long-term commitment to the Deming philosophy, the union has taken a long-range view as well. The union has come to realize that, that they also benefit from productivity. That if we as an organization don't stay in business because of our low productivity, low quality, why they as an organization aren't going to be viable either. So at least in this plant, we've done a lot of work with the union to, to get them to understand that, that they also play a role in this and that it also benefits them. It's much different now than it was years ago where that management and the union fought day and night and the pressure rolled with each other. The product suffered, the people suffered. One of the things that have changed in this plant is that management and union both are working together to make a product to make the plant successful and make the product successful. It is an important part of the Deming philosophy that to produce a good product, people must be given the right tools. A new tool in use at Fiero, Statistical Quality Control, or SQC. SQC gives workers a way to keep track, statistically, of any job function. First, the data is gathered. It could be a seat belt torque, or a record of computer breakdowns, or the pH balance in a paint solution, any process at all. The next step is to chart the data. This record provides a means of inspection, of knowing whether a process is within tolerance limits, and of finding and analyzing problems. In other words, the person doing the job now has control of that process, whatever process it is. What the SQC does, it helps him manage his job. Uh, it tells him when things are going wrong. It tells him when things are going right. He is now responsible to make adjustments based on those charts. and. Uh, what you typically find is that once they have that tool, they find things out that no engineer working six months in an office would ever find out about that job. They learn how to solve their own problems. But many people in both labor and management feel that SQC has nothing to do with their job or that it will be too difficult to use. Training is necessary to show people how SQC can, in fact, make their job easier. The machine itself is not torquing the nuts down to proper torque. The automatic process right. machines. Okay, that is something that mean that means that these machines aren't being calibrated properly, and they're not staying in control like they're supposed to. That's a preventive maintenance function. Ongoing training in SQC and other skills is an important part of the Fiero program and of Deming's 14 points. The topic of this training session: the fishbone chart, a technique for analyzing the causes of a problem. 
in this case, defects at the end of the production process. If the nuts are not put on in the first place or just hand started and a machine not being used, then of course it becomes a people problem. I've seen cases where there's something going on and uh, the guy, uh, he, he just really, uh, some case, they're not concerned with it. What gets people unconcerned about their job is all these other things. That's what Deming is trying to teach us is that, is that when we don't give them proper tooling, don't provide good materials, we can destroy the attitudes. Who wants to come into work and use a bad tool and use bad parts? If you have a problem with quality, if you tell the foreman or you tell somebody, they're going to do something to correct it. Before, they never did. Well, in the past, a lot of our quality problems have been the result of, of vendor problems. And the, the people would, that put the car together would get blamed for that when it really wasn't their fault. They didn't have good material to begin with. Or, worse yet, we'd mix two different suppliers' parts in one box, and then they'd never know what oh, they were reaching for. Oh, really give a shit. And they've known about it, so they know all about variation. They just yeah, but they didn't do anything about it. That's right. Is that right? They just thought well, this is a way of life. This is the way we do it here. We, we right. as management, wouldn't listen to them. They told us about it. Oh. Throughout Fierro's startup, Deming met frequently with staff members to discuss his philosophy and to assess how far Fierro had come in implementing his 14 points. Uh, you have suppliers here uh, uh, any day, uh, quite a number of them uh, working with you, uh, helping to solve problems. Uh, improve the product? Yes, we we currently have uh, roughly 30, 30 different suppliers who are here working on a variety of, of parts that they supply, problems that we're currently having in the production process. And we're trying, we're telling them that we're, we're only as good as they are. If they're no good, we're no good. In the past, it was an adversarial relationship. We called them in when we had a problem, and so we wanted to beat them up verbally when they came in about the, the trouble we were having. And now it's more of a, a team effort to resolve those problems that, that we encounter rather than having a, a big debate about whose responsibility it was. That Patty has developed of uh, uh, your bulb performance. Suppliers are on site frequently at Fiero to learn how their parts are used in the car and to help solve problems. Again, SQC plays an important role. Okay, um, this Pareto chart shows some of the defects that we've been finding in our plant. With this information, my goal is to, to have us all try to eliminate, say, every month, one cause of, of each one of these defects. A connection like this, let's say that we have a problem in this connector. This gets put up against the back of the car and buried in such a manner that you can't get back here to do the repair. They are terribly critical to us on the ability to produce a car the first time a high quality, a super quality product and roll it out the door with the assurance that not only does it work the first time, it's going to work forever. We've gone with our specific hourly rate operators as a team down into their plants. What we're doing is we're doing an exchange of information on not only the level of engineering, but right down to the level of the guy that actually does the job. Now they're not afraid to shut down the line, they're not afraid to tell the vendor, send us quality parts or you won't be our vendor anymore. And that never was the case before. The cheapest was the one we got. When you stop to think what price is, are you talking about the price tag? Or are you talking about the cost, the total cost? Which is the cost, uh, if you're talking about incoming materials, the cost of uh, the material plus the cost to use it, to put it into production. And it's total cost that is important, not the price tag on what you buy. Looking at total cost, not a price tag. At long-term growth of the company, not at the quarterly dividend. At the quality of the product, not at quotas. This approach is the key to the Deming philosophy. And remember that quality is the result of a production process that has statistical control, relies on quality parts, and is tapping the resources of all its people for constant improvement. It is not the result of mass inspection. Point number three is to cease dependence on inspection as a way to produce quality. Build quality in from the start. Any production worker knows the reason why it is that as you improve quality, you improve productivity. You'll tell you straight away, less rework. Get it right. Don't have to rework it. 
it's very difficult to take his 14 points and point to here's point number 12 over here working and here's 13 over here and six over there the whole system working together in mesh in sync is really what you look for and what that results in is, is a much higher quality product coming out the back door and improved productivity and, and the ability to solve problems and, and also an attitude that, that you aren't going to stop. You're going to continue to work on these systems and, and continue to improve. Onyx is an example for all American industry. An example in a lot of ways of uh, having principles for guidance and uh, I might say uh, an example in showing uh, it takes some labor to do it and it doesn't happen all at once. There's no instant pudding. It requires patience to try the new philosophy as well as flexibility. In many different ways, at Fiero and all around Pontiac, changes are happening. Every case is different, but in any office, factory, any organization at all, the Deming philosophy can work. The opportunity for creating management environment and, uh, and dropping decisions down to the lowest level and the elimination of fear and the, uh, the working with suppliers, the helping suppliers, the helping employees, the training and the retraining has absolutely nothing to do with whether it's a manufacturing process or a, uh, or a purely administrative process. It's applicable to service industries, and it's applicable to the government sector, as well as the private sector. Uh, it can work in academia, it can work in, in uh, local government activities. Wherever people have problems, this applies. Improve quality, you automatically improve productivity, you capture the market with lower price and better quality. You stay in business and you provide jobs. So simple. <laughs>